You tell the story about how Justice Jackson came to Stanford. Uh, would you retell that story about how you became a clerk in the first place? Sure. Uh, in, in, in those days, uh, the, the idea of flying back from Stanford, California to Washington, D.C. for an interview to see if you wanted to be, a, if you would be accepted as a Supreme Court law was virtually un, un, unheard of for people of, of ordinary student means. Uh, and, you know, you, to take the train for several days, you wouldn't do either. So people really on the East Coast, at the East Coast schools, had a much better chance of getting, if, if the justice wanted an interview, a much better chance of getting the job just because they could, it was manageable to come from Boston or uh, uh, New Haven or New York and even Chicago. Uh, and so when one of uh, Justice Jackson's previous law clerks, uh, Phil Neal, who was then teaching at Stanford, asked me if I'd ever uh, thought of clerking at the court. I, I said, no, I hadn't. And he said, well, you know, I clerk for Justice Jackson. Justice Jackson is coming here to dedicate the new law school. Would you like to interview with him if he comes? And I said, sure. And so uh, Justice Jackson, when he was out at Stanford, interviewed me. And I mentioned in the book that uh, as soon as he discovered that I was of Swedish extraction, he uh, regaled me with tales of some of his Swedish clients in Jamestown, New York. And I thought, surely, you know, that he'd just given up on me. That he was just making me feel good. And then several months later, I got a letter from him saying, well, would you like to come and be my clerk? So I did. The thing I took away from being a law clerk uh, the most important thing, I think, so far as my own knowledge was concerned, was working on the petitions for certiorari that come to the court. Those are requests to the Supreme Court to review the decisions of a lower court. And in my time as a law clerk in the early 50s, we probably had 12 or 1,300 of them a year. Now we have 5,000 of them a year. Uh, but by going over those, uh, you know, dividing them with my co-clerk, Justice Jackson had two clerks, uh, going over 600 of those petitions and writing a memo to Justice Jackson on them, you really got a very good feel for the kind of business that was being transacted at that time in the federal courts. And that has stood me in good sense, good uh, stead ever since, I think. When you became a clerk, did you think that you'd ever be a justice? I mean, did you... No. Uh, in fact, I, I remember uh, Felix Frankfurter talking to a group of us law clerks and saying that the one thing you absolutely should never do was to try to plan to be a member of this court because there was no way you could go about it.